final closing session. And maybe first, uh, I would like uh, to summarize the thoughts about the latest session, the violence, what are the plans, so we know or you know uh, how the European Institute for Gender Equality is planning to work further on uh, developing uh, the work and also approach to uh, violence against women and then also the general uh, conclusions on the index itself. So uh, regarding violence against women, as you saw, it's, it's really, it is important to have uh, like this comprehensive approach. As Sylvia was saying, it's like fragmented. Different actors do piece of work and then this, let's say, and that. But for the moment, we still don't have like a platform where we would know. So first of all, okay, is female genital mutilation very important? Is cyber uh, or bullying uh, crimes very important? Is it intimate partner violence. And then the information is done and scattered by different uh, actors. But what we will do now, and it's mostly in order to prepare the, the framework, the measurement framework or the index. As you see, we started, but we decided that we haven't analyzed too much, not too in depth, not too professionally. We did a, a thorough analysis of the FRA survey but also we tried, we, as you know, we collected uh, the, we did this uh, like uh, study on the administrative data sources, like Sylvia was talking about justice and about uh, social and uh, uh, health, uh, police and, uh, and, and, and health. And what we see, it's still, it's not enough. So what we will now see, we will consult, definitely not only academia, also the civil society organizations, other professional organizations, but by all means in coordination with the Council of Europe, because we don't want, we don't all, we don't have enough money just to waste on things which are necessary. So we have to see that the member states should not duplicate the work, but also when we do, so that is useful for the member states for the European Union. So what we will do, we will continue now because we developed the first draft, we, we are not yet get ready to share with you because we have to, to do the consultation. And uh, not in two months, not in three months, but next year we hope to be ready. And that will be also in time with the Council of Europe measurement framework. And we definitely uh, will engage uh, the Fundamental Rights Agency. We will see on harassment also the Eurofound. Uh, we will use all possible data, all possible information, to make this measurement framework really solid, robust, and that could also answer quite much on the future policy and actions on the, on the violence issue. I don't know if from Commission you have something on that. I, I have something in my closing. Okay. Now for the index itself. As you see, it was like, the, I don't know how many of you came two years ago when we launched the first index. Uh, I know some of you did. And uh, it was a different picture to see, to be today, to listen. The picture, the difference was that the first time we didn't know how it will be used. We didn't know who will be using it. And we didn't know how, in general, it will go and be in mainstream, or be used in general in policy processes. Now when we saw, as you see, we, we deliberately tried to plan the, the agenda that we present, we want you to read, so we, we didn't spend all day presenting, we wanted you to read the report, but we wanted the politicians, the implementers, the civil society and academia to discuss what's the benefit, what's the value, what's the added value of the index. And uh, I'm really very happy to see that now it starts rooting into the system in the minds. And uh, we saw in the second session also how well this kind of mainstreaming, when Viginta was presenting the correlation with different areas. So we will work further on that. And as Yolanta mentioned this morning, we are now, not tomorrow, but I want already next week to start discussing the plans for the next index. 
And the next index on intersecting inequalities, uh, that will be the focus. Like, of course, violence will be developed further. And then some more data, as we say, social power is empty. Why? So we will see during the period how much we can get. But the main will be also to take this uh, more aspects of, of intersecting inequalities, uh, where also we will engage other target groups which have the information. And I really hope that the index will be useful. Many were saying today it should be an obligatory reading, and I'm happy to hear that, because if you read and you find information, and in particular member states also for specific information, you are always welcome. We were saying we are planning now also to see how the information, besides the country profiles where you can find outside, how that could be useful for you. But we will uh, try, of course, we are very few, so with the time availability to develop it a bit deeper analysis uh, on the specific member states so you can see and maybe you can use it for specific actions or policy uh, in uh, inf influencing the policy. And uh, this will be more or less what we think we, or what we're discussing that we will do. And uh, we are very proud of the index. And once again, everybody who participated, who engaged, who supported us, the team, and thus, uh, once again, uh, I ex ex extend my biggest gratitude on behalf of the Institute. Can I speak from the yep. Let's see. Yes, I think you can hear me. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm here representing Salah Sastamoinen, whom you've heard earlier today, but who was called away uh, for an important meeting at the Commission about the future of gender equality policy. So I think she has a good alibi for not being here. And it gives me the pleasure to meet you and to speak to you about uh, the work that is developed by EIGE in my closing remarks, um, which I speak on behalf of Salah Sastermoinen, I would also like to give some ideas and suggestions for uh, the next index. Let me first start by officially congratulating EIGE on launching the second edition of the Gender Equality Index. It is a very important result of the work of the Institute. It was good to hear here today so many declarations of its practical use. And we may agree or not with the results revealed by the index, but it turns the spotlights on the state of gender equality across the European Union. The results show that there have been quite marginal improvements between 2005 and 2012 in the domains covered by the tool. With an overall score of 52.9 uh, out of 100 in 2012, the EU remains only halfway towards gender equality, having risen barely from 51.3 in 2005. In 10 member states, the gaps between women and men were narrowed, but five other countries have actually let the gap grow bigger. Taking into account all the efforts invested in moving towards gender equality, this is a striking result. It urges further action, particularly in domains which did not see progress. Uh, the index suggests that gender inequality is most pervasive in the area of time and power. Women continue to spend much more time on unpaid caring and domestic activities, and men continue to be overrepresented in all areas of decision making. On the other hand, we should admit that in some domains, member states and the EU overall progress towards more gender equality. The most pronounced, though very marginal, improvements are evident in the area of work and money. We discussed the results revealed by the index and some methodological issues. This brought us finally to the discussion on how the index can and should be used. We saw that there is a need to reflect more in depth on how the index 
can better accommodate our specific expectations. Though it is very positive that the index brings attention to the situation and evolution of gender inequalities in Europe, we don't want to stop here. We would see the index ultimately, ultimately stimulating action to tackle inequalities, as you also just focus on. The index will be further developed. We should fully exploit this opportunity and make the index an even more powerful tool. The first way to do this is to confront the index with our expectations. Putting in place a method which would allow collecting and analyzing feedback from the stakeholders is a good idea, which would certainly make a difference in terms of a wider use of the tool. Further, the adequacy of indica indicators can increase the use of the index. It is important that the indicators are complete in their content, target the most urgent aspects and areas for improvement. For example, and this is a question, is working to tight deadlines really the most important challenge for gender equality when it comes to quality of work? We believe that work-life balance and gender equality itself are two important dimensions of quality of work, together with adequate earnings, education and training, and working conditions. Therefore, taking into account indicators on work-life balance would benefit the index as a source of complete information on quality of work. Consider the different balances between work and family life achieved by women and men. Or see the impact of parenthood on women and men. It is okay, it is of a, of a similar magnitude, but of an opposite sign. Men with children are much more likely to be employment than men without children. And for women, it's the opposite. In this context, I would like to mention indicators on gender-based violence, and they have been widely discussed here. The index can provide very valuable information going beyond the indicators available through the FRA survey. Providing scores for each individual member state would also enrich the index as the source of information on gender-based violence in Europe. We need better statistical information on gender-based violence. Data need to be collected in a harmonized way. We all need to make the case for this. Member states, through their national statistical offices and Eurostat, need to work together in order to fill this gap in a reasonable time, with our support, of course. Furthermore, the index would benefit from the most recent data and information so, for example, the next edition in 2017 should include data from at least 2016 to be relevant for policymakers. Communication also matters. More impact driven actions targeting specific stakeholders with clearly defined objectives can lead to an ever more extensive use of the index. Sustaining the interest in the tool can also happen through providing as many as possible new facts and figures. And finally, one cannot overstate the importance of the quality of the data. The measure of ge gender equality crucially depends on the quality and availability of statistical data, which clearly now varies across different domains. An important role of the index is to highlight shortcomings and to create a momentum for a renewed commitment from policymakers to improve statistics. This is crucial in particular in the EU context, where all our common work is based on comparable statistical data. It is therefore worth reflecting on a number of priorities for action in the following period, based on the situation reflected by the current index. I would like to draw briefly three conclusions. First of all, the Commission welcomes this index. We are convinced that a good index can become a flagship project at European scale. It can strengthen the role of the Institute as a European Centre of Excellence and Knowledge on Gender Equality. 
We need IGE to play this role and to become the reference source of new, breaking news data and analysis on gender equality. This will help the Commission to concentrate on its core policy-making tasks. Secondly, this tool can and should be used to give more prominence to gender equality in the public debate. And thirdly, the Commission counts on the Institute continuing to work on the index in order to further develop it and fine-tune it. We are looking forward to the next editions of the gender equality. And of course, the Commission, although we are respecting each other's role, will continue to support IGE in this demanding task. I wish you good luck with it, and I thank you all for your attention. Thank you. I can assure the Commission that we will do our best. And of course, uh, as the OECD colleague was saying, the, the quality of data, the robustness, I, I think the, the Portuguese uh, representative of statistics office was also saying the same. So we definitely do not use any data which is in question, which is not really solid. So uh, we will discuss, we will analyze, and of course we want the index to be used, and we want the index to influence the policy making, and we want it really add to the debates about not only gaps, but what the good, good practices show, which member states did better in this and that way. So I would encourage you, uh, soon we will have more information on our website, and also you saw, Yolanda was showing also the web, uh, you know, the, the, the interface which we will have. And uh, we will uh, send, uh, when we have more information, new information for the conference participants, we will send it out. Please stay in touch with us. Please send the message. And in particular, I hope that you will distribute in your own languages about your own country. And next time, some of those requests, I hope, will be already in the index. And also, if you have suggestions, like the Fatima was saying, the Portugal had some suggestions, send us. Send the suggestions, because now it's time, before it's too late, before we uh, make a statement that there was no data, or there was not interesting. So, you are mostly welcome, and we also want to cooperate with every one of you. Thank you for coming to the conference. Thank you, members of our management board and experts forum. They are our bodies, and they still uh, quite many were here today. We did next milestone, um, mile stone. stone in our five-year-old life, and it wasn't bad. So. Next time we see, maybe for during some other launch, uh, thank you for supporting us and enjoy reading the index. Thank you.